From the National Weather Service in Raleigh, it's Nick Petro with your routine weekly briefing for Central North Carolina. This is your Thursday morning edition here, 1130. On 21st of July, this briefing runs out through basically uh, next Wednesday, the 27th of July. And we'll get into our pattern maps here in a minute, but uh, everybody knows that I love to show GR Earth uh, during these briefings. It kind of sets the table here. Uh, for the rest of the slides, and what I'm showing here is a combination of radar, visible satellite, and temperatures. And uh, we have been sort of lucky, if you will, so far this morning as I zoom in here to North Carolina to see an abundance of low clouds across central North Carolina today uh, so far. And why we've been lucky is because that helps to keep the temperatures held back a little bit. Uh, you'll notice uh, basically where there is a void of clouds, uh, let's say here, um, you know, along the coast, look at those temperatures in the upper 80s, if not lower 90s versus where there's clouds. We're holding right around 80. You know, there's a 79, there's another 79. And then where there's another break in the clouds, look at that, 85 versus 83 where there's clouds. So, you know, this time of year, especially when you have fairly thick low clouds, uh, that those can be very helpful in keeping temperatures uh, held down. But the air mass is the same and it's there. It just needs to be mixed up um, with some sunshine. So once we um, get rid of these clouds, which uh, they will eventually uh, dissipate and break up, uh, then we're gonna see a rapid climb uh, into the upper 80s and into the lower 90s. Uh, let me put on here heat indices. <clears throat> you could see uh, look at these purple numbers. These are all heat indices well up into the 90s, even some hundreds uh, back to our west. Uh, you know, out, out towards the lower Mississippi River Valley, you see those hundreds, right? <clears throat> well, that's all part of the similar air mass. And, you know, if we uh, if we can get rid of these clouds, I uh, wouldn't be surprised to see a heat index of, of 100 around central North Carolina, maybe even 105, uh, basically uh, across the eastern portion of the state. In fact, we do have a heat advisory in effect for today, mainly east of um, east of US one. So, uh, so we are expecting some of those uh, 100 plus heat indices. But again, um, you know, we're just watching these clouds because uh, that's the one thing that could sort of, um, you know, delay some of that heating. So, um, so anyway, if you don't hit 100, don't be surprised. You know, we got a little bit of a later start to the heating. But, uh, but it, I, I think uh, our thoughts here is that these clouds should go away here fairly soon, and then we'll see a rapid climb in those uh, temperatures. And, and as I zoom out, um, you can see, you know, heat indices uh, obviously are well up into the um, uh, up into the 90s all across the east and the south where we have this similar air mass. All right, what about temperatures? Well, you can see it's, um, I, I think the main point here that I want to show, the main weather feature, um, and let me just get rid of these numbers here is look at how it sort of clears out uh, north of the Ohio River Valley. And, and it's uh, subtly, subtly cooler, not, not drastically cooler, but I think these heat index uh, values bear that out. Uh, look at how you see purples, but then there's mainly just reds there where the skies are clear north of the Ohio Valley. There's actually a, a very weak, subtle uh, boundary, if you will, a cold front. And, um, and while it's not going to do a drastic change to the air mass, there's just enough of a little density change and perhaps, um, uh, you know, uh, on one side or the other versus a, a, a coupled with wind shift along it to perhaps uh, provide some lifting forces for some showers and thunderstorms to become somewhat organized uh, later this afternoon and evening across our area. Uh, so that boundary is is just to our west. It's approaching. There'll be some uh, outflow boundaries from existing storms and some new storms forming along a prefrontal uh, part of that boundary. And you can see some of the uh, some of the low clouds even trying to bubble up here a little bit uh, north of Charlotte. So um, maybe later this uh, this afternoon to this evening, we'll see uh, some showers and thunderstorms form. Obviously, I got radar of radar and there's already some showers and storms in the vicinity of Columbia back towards Atlanta. Um, and uh, and I would expect um, uh, an additional uh, area of storms to form behind that and affect us here in central North Carolina uh, later this afternoon and evening. So uh, again, a lot of this is contingent upon the clouds, 
you know, sometimes there could be uh, little, uh, very small scale boundaries. Like for example, it's it's cooler underneath this cloud, it's warmer in this uh, cloud-free area. So there's almost like a little natural, uh, a, a heating boundary, if, if you will, right there. There's another heating boundary right here. So, so we, we call those differential heating boundaries. So, you know, storms often like to form on those boundaries, on those differential heating boundaries too. So uh, you can almost form, if you will, little air mass uh, or little temperature boundaries just locally from where there's clouds versus where there isn't. So uh, bottom line is, is just uh, look for some scattered showers and storms to form just about uh, anywhere uh, later today, this afternoon, evening, um, perhaps uh, trying to become organized uh, thanks to that front that I mentioned. Uh, main thread is damaging winds, okay? So let's go back to the slides and I'll put this uh, with that table. So oh, I got to change my pointer here, standby. Let me clear that screen and uh, let's go ahead to the to uh, some highlights. Uh, I want to jump right into the highlights today. Uh, first highlight is dangerous heat. Again, you know, this is all contingent upon those clouds, but we do have a heat advisory in effect from about noon till 8 p.m., mainly east of US-1. Uh, heat indices we're expecting to, to eclipse 105 uh, in that area, threat of heat, illness, um, drink plenty of fluid, stay in air-conditioned rooms, stay out of the sun, check up on neighbors and animals. Okay, the typical, the stuff we, you know, um, repeat almost every day in the summer. Okay, so dangerously hot today. And here's the other headline is the severe and flash flood threat today across Central North Carolina. Uh, the Storm Prediction Center uh, has uh, basically our entire area in, in either marginal or slight risk. The slight risk is level two um, and, and um, is the yellow area. Marginal is the darker green. The main threat will be damaging wind gusts, especially over the southern and central Piedmont, where you see the yellow. Uh, on the right side of this graphic, the Weather Prediction Center, which is one of the National Weather Service's uh, national centers, uh, has a level one out of four risk for flooding, flash flooding, that is, or excessive rainfall. You know, we call it excessive rainfall, but really the, the threat is for flash flooding. Okay, so um, the bottom line is, is any one of these uh, thunderstorms that form today, uh, you know, if they, if they repetitively hit the same spot or if they take their good time over, you know, typical flood prone areas, you know, there could be some uh, localized flash flooding that develops, okay? So those are our two headlines for today, the heat and the risk for severe thunderstorms and flash flooding, again, with those scattered showers and thunderstorms later today. All right, so what about the pattern? I, I was already mentioned the weak cold front approaching from the west. That'll set the stage for those showers and storms today. A couple of those storms could have some damaging wind gusts. And that boundary will stall near the coast you know, and it, it's not really much of a boundary, if you will. It's just kind of a, a dissipated boundary. But uh, there'll be probably just enough of a wind shift that we can maybe call it a boundary uh, near the coast uh, tonight and Friday. And, and that will serve as the focus, if you will, for the best chances of showers and thunderstorms tomorrow will be uh, east of I-95. You know, again, this time of year, we can never roll out a stray shower and thunderstorm you know, even further west, but um, the main headline will be the heat as well. It'll go, it's going to be hot tomorrow, <laughs> uh, no doubt about that. Little change on Saturday. The most of the models suggest the best chance for showers and storms will be east. But again, you know, just about anywhere across central North Carolina could see an isolated afternoon or evening thunderstorm. Again, hot. Sunday will probably be the hottest of the day and the driest of the next three days too. Um, but again, despite uh, the being the driest of the next three days, we still can't roll out a stray late day thunderstorm, um, you know, as typical in the summertime. But again, the main headline for Sunday will be the heat. OK, so I, I got to think there'll probably be some advisories uh, over the course of the next couple of days for the heat. So, again, just make sure you heed the uh, advisories and the, the, the um, you know, uh, calls to action for heat safety. And then uh, just kind of summarizing the first half of next week, uh, the best thing I can tell you is typical summer weather, uh, hot each day with late day scattered thunderstorms. And, you know, here we are in late July, and it's just pretty typical late July weather, okay, uh, for the first half of next week. I don't really see uh, uh, any relief in sight in terms of a, you know, really cool air mass coming in and, and scouring all this out. I just don't see that in the in the at least in the foreseeable future. Okay, so 
Uh, our briefings are going to start to sound very similar, <laughs> uh, you know, every Tuesday and Thursday here as we head through the rest of July and, and even into August. All right. How much rainfall over the next couple of days? Um, you know, these maps kind of bear it out that the best chance uh, for more widespread rain will be today. And then it's focused more along the coast tomorrow and uh, Saturday. Uh, driest on Sunday. You can see that in the lower left. And then we get back into uh, the typical scattering uh, early next week. Maybe a quarter to an inch of rain, a quarter inch to about an inch of rain on average through the next five days. Localized spots could see more, but um, but certainly not a, a, a huge amount. OK, so, you know, again, localized spots could see could see localized much more. And again, that's why we uh, mentioned that flash flood uh, risk. Speaking of that flash flood risk, again, uh, area wide today, best chance for any flash flooding will be south and east of Raleigh tomorrow. And then again, drying out more. Well, not drying out, but lesser risk for flash flooding on Saturday. Severe thunderstorm uh, slide, again, just reiterating today's slide in the upper left um, with that level one and level two thunderstorm risk, uh, severe thunderstorm risk, I should say, across central North Carolina. And then ordinary thunderstorms Friday and Saturday. Uh, no, uh, right now we don't see a risk of any organized severe weather for Friday and Saturday. So that's that's a look at the next three days at least. All right, well, the tropics are quiet, but Again, I don't want to sound like a broken record because I mentioned this on Monday, but we're still a, a good three, maybe four weeks away from the season really ramping up. So, again, if you're wondering, well, why the tropics so quiet right now? We're in the tropical season. Don't worry. This is very, very normal for July to be somewhat quiet. OK, uh, we, <laughs> we're probably not going to be uh, or it's, it's not going to stay like this. Wait till August and we'll see. We'll have a lot more to talk about when it comes to tropics once we get to August. All right. Um, the greatest drought is still east of 95. And uh, that pretty much wraps up our briefing. Um, you could see some details there at the bottom. Um, I just randomly picked the spot in Central North Carolina and, and copied and pasted that in there. But, you know, so some spots might be a little cooler, particularly north and west. Some places might be a little warmer than the numbers I show at the bottom, particularly south and east. Um, but, but generally you see there, uh, pretty decent chance for rain today, and then your typical scattered, widely scattered to scattered afternoon, evening showers and thunderstorms. Uh, Sunday being the driest day, and the main takeaway too is the heat. Look at those uh, readings. Sunday it's going to be <laughs> just just make sure you um, just make sure you plan for this heat. Okay, I know a lot of times folks like to spend time outdoors in the summer. You know, just take it easy in the afternoon. If you got any work to do outside, do it in the morning real early in the morning or maybe like right before the sunset in the evening. Uh, those are the coolest parts of the day. That's the best time to cut your grass, really. Uh, probably late in the late late in the evening, right before the sun sets. That's probably your uh, best bet in terms of, of uh, lowest humidity uh, just from the heat of the day and, and coolest temperatures. OK, that's when I cut my grass. <laughs> All right. So uh, hazardous impacts again. Don't forget the heat. Gosh, I, I know I'm sounding like a broken record here. But uh, heat advisory in effect for much, much of Central North Carolina, uh, east of uh, US-1 today. And we'll probably see uh, some additional advisories as we head through the next couple of days. And then again, watch out for those uh, damaging uh, wind gusts localized and uh, localized flooding with uh, today's afternoon and evening showers and thunderstorms. So that wraps up today's uh, briefing for Central North Carolina on this Thursday, July 21st. 2022.